untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. This video was recorded during the early access event where I got access to a fully unlocked account thanks to Wizards invite to preview some of the new cards from Dominaria United. And as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at Mono Black Aggro featuring four copies of Liliana of the Veil vale, reprinted. Now once again in standard, three mana planeswalker starts out at three loyalty and often you're going to want a minus two right away, making the opponent sacrifice a creature can be quite devastating especially if you're on the play and the opponent just played their 2-drop, then can also plus 1 to make each player discard a card. Now this appears to be symmetrical, but as a very low curve deck, we're often going to be empty handed by the time we start plusing Liliana, so it might only affect the opponent, plus you can always decide not to activate Liliana if you want to keep all your cards in hand. And then you can also potentially work up to the minus 6 ultimate, especially against control decks where you might not be able to use the minus 2 very often. And then separate all permanents target player controls into two separate piles. The opponent can choose one pile to keep and one pile to sacrifice. And this can even affect their lands as well, which can be quite backbreaking in a lot of scenarios. So Liliana's awesome, and we're pairing it with a ton of other great cards from Dominaria United. At one mana, the full set of Evolved Sleeper, a 1 1 that we can sleep slowly level up, so it's a great mana sink, and first becomes a 2-2, then a 3-3 death touch, and eventually we can put plus one counters on it and draw cards at the cost of one life. So we can play this early, also good against opposing copies of Liliana of the Veil, vale, so we can maybe sacrifice our one drop without having to spend too much mana into it, and then maybe take out Liliana with one of our many two drops. And then in the late game, once we're empty handed, maybe we're in a top deck battle because of Liliana of the Veil, vale, we can now play our sleeper and sink a ton of mana into it to take over the game. We also have the full set of Cult Conscript, 1 mana, 2 1, a Skeleton Warrior enters tapped, and for 1 on a black we can return it from our graveyard to the battlefield, but we can only activate it if a non-skeleton creature died under our control this turn. So nice recursive threat, also don't feel bad discarding it to Liliana, as we might be able to get it back later. And then we also have a new exciting removal spell at 1 mana, Cut Down, an instant destroying a creature with total power and toughness 5 or less. So this can answer most 1 and 2 drops in the format, as well as some uh, 3 drops like Rafine, the 1-4, that's notoriously hard to kill. So Cut Down is excellent, will give you a great card in the aggro matchups especially, where having cheap answers is important. And then we're complementing it with more removal at 2 mana, Infernal Grasp can kill anything at the cost of 2 life, and since we're an aggressive deck, that's usually going to put the opponent under pressure, we don't really care about losing 2 life as much. And then we also have two copies of Shieldred, the Apocalypse at 4 mana, a 4-5 legendary Phyrexian Praetor with a Death Touch, saying whenever we draw a card we gain two life, which can maybe help offset Infernal Grasp, and whenever an opponent draws a card they lose two life, so it can be incredibly punishing, especially once we put the opponent under pressure with our earlier creatures, maybe make them discard with a Liliana, while also kind of making them suffer through Shieldred, and Shieldred can also potentially help offset the life loss from Tenacious Underdog, which is another great tool in standard right now. With creature lands being gone, having late game mana sinks becomes increasingly important, and Underdog can be blitzed out of the graveyard for 4 mana and 2 life, so it can attack and also draw a card once it dies, which will help us uh, fuel our late game plan as well. Can also potentially enable the Cult Conscript if you put an appropriate stop to bring back the Conscript after the Underdog dies, if you have a lot of mana available. And then we also have two copies of Tainted Adversary, fine on two mana as a 2-3 with Death Touch, but can later also potentially enter with a few counters and joined by a few decayed zombie tokens, which can pressure the opponent. And then four copies of Blade of the Oni, a 2 mana 3 1 with Menace, so it can apply some nice pressure early. And it can also be reconfigured onto another creature for 4 mana, turning it into a 5 5 creature with Menace. Very useful if we can maybe reconfigure onto a Conscript, which sometimes struggles to attack in the mid to late game. And it can also maybe help us play around a sweeper effect by reconfiguring the blade. The blade doesn't die if our opponent wipes the board. Can also pump up a creature to 5 toughness so it doesn't die to some of the cheaper removal spells that deal damage. So a very versatile card that's also just fine as a 2-drop. Offers us even more versatility in the late game. 
And then at 3 mana, full set of Graveyard Trespasser. I mentioned how important Underdog is going to be in future standard. Well, Trespasser is the perfect answer to Underdog, being able to exile it when it enters a battlefield, and a 2 for 1 for the opponent to get rid of it. So for already making them discard with Liliana, it's going to be even harder for them to get rid of a Trespasser to begin with. And then our mana base, very simple now, just one Abandoned Mire, could potentially play a second, but don't want to run into the legendary rule. And then 23 basic swamps. So standard mana bases are going to be a lot simpler now, especially for monocolor decks. Then other cards that didn't quite make the deck include the Raven Man, which does have great synergy with Liliana, but I think you do need some additional discard effects to really fully leverage it. Can maybe synergize it with uh, blood tokens that you can activate during the opponent's turn as well to make additional Raven tokens, so that might be for a different deck. And then cards like Invoke Despair at 5 mana seem very powerful, of course would fit in a mono black deck, but because we're playing Liliana, I want to keep the curve low. Would be kind of awkward if we're stranded with a 5-drop without a lands to cast it, and want a plus 1 or Liliana, so that's why keeping the curve low is so important. Now we could potentially play Sorin at 4 mana as an extra planeswalker to provide extra card advantage and potentially make 2-3 flying life-linking vampire tokens, but I think Shieldred does a better job of pressuring the opponent's life total, so it complements our aggro game plan a little bit better. But should the mana game turn into a very controlling mana game with a lot of spot removal and sweeper effect, I could definitely see the advantage of having Sorin in your deck instead of Shieldred to have a bit more staying power against all those removal effects. But yeah, for now, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a great hand. Got a proactive and a reactive one mana play. And turn two blades, couple Lilianas. Opponent on a blue, a red deck. And a Ledger Shredder. Ooh, triple Liliana. So... Could play Blade, and then next turn maybe a Liliana takes care of Ledger Shredder. Can't attack into it profitably. And they might be a Creature Light deck, so they might not have a second one for uh, Liliana to take out. And even if they do with triple Liliana, it's fine if they take one out. Alright, step one, attack. Let's see if this resolves. No more distractions. Let's make this quick. We're gonna march Shredder and or Oni. So Shredder survives. Fair enough. And a Shivan Devastator. Gonna add on to the pressure. But we can cut down Shredder and then Liliana takes care of Devastator. Shieldred's also tempting. I think we'll deal with the board first. Sequence this way so Shredder doesn't get to connive. Opponent down to 9. Can start leveling up our sleeper. Can even reconfigure blade. Okay. So shieldred and plus seems fine here. Probably wanted to plus first, not that it matters too much. And then Delver could transform, killing Liliana. I'll keep a second one. Probably won't have time to level up both sleepers anyway. And Leer's an excellent one to make them discard. Blade would trade for both creatures, so that's probably gonna go through. And even if Delver transforms, Shieldred's probably gonna be able to close out the game. Another infantry. It's probably not gonna cut it. Make the opponent sacrifice. You to me. Me. And then reconfigure Blade onto Sleeper, tank with both. Yeah. 
And that does it. Awesome. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems keepable. Turn one, we have to decide between Sleeper and Conscript already. And I uh, could see playing Sleeper first in case we pick up a valuable 2-drop we want to play. And end up discarding Conscript to Liliana's plus ability to later get back. Opponent red, black, white as well now, and green. So, yeah, can play Underdog. And then next turn Liliana, maybe minus or start plusing. Step one, attack. Opponent takes it. And play Liliana. And happy enough discarding conscripts. Happy to help, but I'm taking the credit when we win. Drop it. Can play Shieldred next turn to add to the pressure. The only drawback of plussing is if our opponent's a reanimator deck and they somehow discarded something to reanimate on turn four. It's gonna be a herd migration instead to help with domain. So yeah, our opponent's got a full domain here. Just a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, dies to cut down or we can minus Liliana. Although also don't hate the idea of plussing here. So let's see, we could level this up twice. So I can attack with a team. If they block, I'll level up. And then Shieldred also punishes the second chapter of Fable. Opponent takes it. And then I can discard lands. Tired of your secrets. Play Shieldred. And have a Liliana taking up to an ultimate. So your opponent does not discard anything. Shaman attacking. So they might have a 3 damage sweeper here to non-tokens. So I'll take it. Could also be depopulate. All right, never mind. Drag to the bottom, wipes the board. Still have a Liliana taking up and an underdog. We can escape. We all have things we'd rather forget. So next turn we could ultimate. Cut down. Can deal with the. Reflection. So yeah, despite a sweeper killing three of our creatures, we're still in decent shape. All right, never mind. Binding. Clean answer to Liliana. So the game continues, and uh, probably want to kill Reflection, and then think Underdog might still beat out Blade. Although it's close. Now that creature lands are gone, it's nice to have a mana sink with Underdog. And Trespass are a way to answer opposing copies. Opponent passes. And uh, yeah, we can Underdog plus Blade. Or I can go Trespasser plus Blade. Her opponent has another Leyline Binding, we don't necessarily want him exiling the Underdog, as it dodges other removal spells. So I could see the benefit of playing Trespasser plus Blade, although on the other hand, if they have another uh, drag to the bottom... Then we might be better off getting the Underdog back. Let's see, Conscripts... We could also use... And instant speed in case they kill Trespasser. Yeah, maybe we can just pass. 
Although they exile Trespasser, it doesn't work, but then they have to two for one themselves for Ward. So we'll play around Drank to the bottom a little bit here instead of playing Blade. Right, opponent had another herd migration. Grabs a swamp, gain three life. And our wolf transforms. Can now hit for four. And I probably just wanna get underdog going. Attack. And there's two creatures I could exile. Which would present lethal. Awesome. And then end of turn, we could also wait for Underdog to die and then bring back our Conscript as a nice value play. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's gonna be pretty bad against control, but uh, I'll try it out. Turn one Lantern Bearer. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, let them untap. See if they try and put an enchantment on it. Otherwise, I can probably take one, maybe kill their two drop instead. Opponent passes. Don't think I need to cut down anything just yet. Play a blade. And then back it up with removal. Fairy Vandal might be a fine target for a cut down. Underdog's nice too. Step one attack. And then... Could potentially cast two removal spells here, in case they counter one of them. How sad are we if Underdog gets countered? Upside of passing is we maybe waste the opponent's mana if they don't have a flash card to play. And then we can use removal in the opponent's turn. Uh, they've got an adversary to run out. Do I want to intervene now? Maybe in their upkeep. Before they draw, so we waste their mana if they have a 1 mana protection spell. And then we'll kill adversary. And then I'll play Infernal Grasp first, keep cut down as a cheaper answer. That should still kill most of their stuff. Alright, opponent's got a haughty gin. Still dies to cut down here. So I can cut down the Vandal, and then maybe next turn, Underdog plus cut down again. Liliana's also pretty decent. Another reason to go heavy on the removal here. So we'll hit for three. And we'll just cut down play underdog. Opponent passes. We'll attack. And then we'll get this countered most likely. Spell pierce. That's fine. Another Lantern Bear. And we could play a Shieldred here. Although they probably have another counter spell lined up. So we'll attack first. Bone and Chumps. And then I can play Adversary, keep up Infernal Grasp. And yep, a guy's light snare was to be expected. Delver's fine. Opponent stays back. We'll kill Delver here. Can also reconfigure to make this a lethal threat. And now our opponent stepped out, so we can resolve Shieldred. And attack with the team still. A 
and our opponent takes it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is keepable. Turn one sleeper, turn two adversary, turn three, maybe level up, play a second adversary, or we can level up twice. Potentially sprinkle in a cut down if needed. And having a one drop also makes opposing copies of Liliana a little bit worse. It's always nice to be able to curve out. Turn one initiates. Well, we can attack into it since we can threaten to level up and then still play adversary, which I think I prefer over keep up, cut down, play conscripts. Opponent is red white, so could see a hasty adversary, but. We've got our own 2-3 death touch back. Thalia might be something we want to cut down, although for now I could attack into it. Including with my sleeper. So we'll keep up the pressure. Opponent takes it, and uh, yeah, let's just go adversary conscripts. And then worry about killing stuff once we've got all our creatures in play. Now, Brutal Cathar exiling Adversary would let them attack, but then they're also taking a lot of damage on the way back, so... Yeah, so opponent's gonna get to train the Initiate, still dies to cut down, luckily. And then cut down... can get our Adversary back at instant speed. Shieldred's nice too. Okay, so attack with everyone. And then I have to make up my mind if they take it. Whether to cut down and what to cut down, because I don't want it to switch to knight necessarily. So I might want to just cut down now. Could also cut down Thalia and then still kill Cathar in the opponent's turn to set up an ambush but it's going to be pretty obvious when we don't level up Sleeper here. So I think just killing Cathar now, getting a blocker for Initiate and Thalia, and then leveling up since we cannot cut down with Thalia out. Opponent falls to 7. If we draw lands, great. If not, we're drawing a spell we can cast, presumably. A Reckless Stormseeker, opponent also having to pay a life off their own Thrain portal. But they did find a way to still attack and uh, train, but our opponent seems very dead on the way back. Cut down Stormseeker. Should do it. Or we can uh, play Shieldred here, doesn't matter. They're also just dead on board, I guess. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems reasonable. Turn to Underdog, into Trespasser, or potentially a Liliana if we need to edict a creature. Opponent Esper Colors. Well, that's it for three. And then... Could start plussing Liliana. I think I prefer developing an extra threat here. And we'll go with Trespasser over Sleeper. That right, point's good at Counterspell. Sleeper would have played around Make Disappear quite nicely, actually. Hit for three. I'll try Sleeper now. And then we can level up in the opponent's turn if we don't need to. Maybe Infernal Grasp. Okay, let's play land attack. And then probably want to resolve Liliana. Start blessing. Enough with the 
and I'll hang on to maybe a second Liliana in case they answer the firsts. And cut down I can cast right now. Could see the advantage of keeping Infernal Grasp as well. We'll try this. Put on discarding a Deluge, so definitely a control deck. We get to untap. And, uh, yeah, can uh, level up Sleeper twice, potentially, before deciding what to do with Liliana. Boom has got nothing, and I will plus discarding cutdown. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather... Farewell. Seems very far away. Revelry is actually not bad here, gaining life, making a pair of 1 1s, which line up well against Liliana's minus 2. Although, even though we're close to ultimate, we can just minus 2 Liliana, play another 1 minus 2 again, and attack for the win. Feels kind of bad when we were close to ultimating, but. Uh, I'll take the win. Okay, we're on the play, and seems decent. Bit of removal, got our blade into Trespasser. And we want to kill a Phoenix Chick. Yeah, I don't hate it, since we can exile it with a Trespasser on turn 3. And we want to curve out here. Blade vs. Underdog's interesting. Let's play Blade first so we can actually attack past the blocker. Okay, it's gonna be Epicure plus a second one. So they could double block Blade, which is fine by me. And Exile Phoenix. And then Shieldred's not a bad turn for. Red might struggle to deal 5 damage. Lightning Strike's gonna be a 2 for 1. Epicure's attack. So we're racing. Shielders can also punish the use of blood tokens, so our opponent will have to activate a response here. Otherwise we're gonna lose two more life. And our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Can apply some early pressure with conscripts, which also plays well with Liliana if we happen to discard it. Opponent also potentially mono black. Okay, let's get in for two. And then I'm kind of liking conscript keep up cut down, just to make sure the board's relatively clear once we play Liliana, so we can keep up the pressure. Opponent's gonna level up. Yeah, I think that's still fine. Don't have to play Liliana here, can just play two more creatures. And then now an opposing Liliana is not going to be very effective. So I can level up. Minus an underdog. And then I'm probably fine attacking with all, even if they can maybe blitz to kill Liliana, they would be taking a ton of damage in the process. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is missing some removal at one or two mana, but we've got a Liliana, if we can hit our land drops. It's not the best, but I'll try it. Oh, 
I'll go with Underdog first here against a Junt deck. And our opponent on a Domain deck. And yeah, this Liliana lines up perfectly. Something, suspicious is there. Something people will have to get <laughs> used to, being on the draw, facing a Liliana, having them edict your creature. Get another Brawler, which is going to die to an Infernal Grasp, and can discard an Underdog here. Drop it. And then I could attack first. I'm okay leveling up Sleeper twice. Oop, meant to level this up once. That's fine, we'll pass. And then most likely killing Brawler. Alright, Stormseeker as well, so they've got two ways to pressure Liliana. So I'll wait on Infernal Grasp to kill the one creature that's actually attacking Liliana. And if they send both, then I can just level up Sleeper twice. And not waste my mana killing their creatures when we can kill the opponent in the meantime. Trespasser is useful too, so I can hit for 6, play Trespasser. Which can start draining them. So yeah, waiting on the Infernal Grasp I think worked out, but should have dealt one more damage with the Sleeper by leveling up before damage. Hasty Shaman Token's nice, can make a treasure right away. Although I don't know if they're in a position to attack. Opponent hangs back, and now Shield Roots can also punish Fable. Uh, if I kill, let's say, Brawler with Infernal Grasp, what happens? I attack with all, that's also probably game. Since we get to drain for one with Trespasser, three creatures, two blockers, and one will kill them. Awesome. Alright, those were some quick and brutal games with Mono Black Aggro, which will be a major player in standard going forward. The combination of a low curve with efficient threats, cheap removal also with a new 1 mana removal spell, as well as topping off your curve with a Liliana, which is great in a low curve deck in general, because you won't feel as bad when having 2 plus 1 if you're empty handed of course, and if you have to discard land 4 or 5 it's not really a disaster when your curve tops out at 4 with 2 copies of shield root anyway. And then the deck also has a ton of late game mana sinks between underdog blitzing out of the graveyard, skeletons that can be returned, and you also have sleepers that can be leveled up. So even in the more grindy matchups, you still have some nice late game tools available now that uh, creature lands are gone. Also important to have ways to spend mana in the late game. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.